In this video, we are going to graph inverse cotangent and identify the domain and range. We begin with the original graph of cotangent. Now, cotangent is a function because it passes the vertical line test. That means if I draw any vertical line to the graph, it will only intersect the graph one time. However, in order for a function to have an inverse, it must be one-to-one. -one. In other words, the graph must pass the horizontal line test. This means if I draw any horizontal line to the graph, it will only intersect the graph one time. Clearly, we see that cotangent is not one-to-one. -one. It fails the horizontal line test. But mathematicians are clever. Mathematicians decided to restrict the domain from zero to pi. In this way, the graph passes the horizontal line test and thus cotangent has an inverse. So we restrict the domain from zero to pi. Let us redraw the graph of cotangent with the restricted domain. So I'm going to redraw cotangent from zero to pi. We have an asymptote at pi and here we have pi over two and the graph is going to swim like this. The following are the steps for graphing inverse cotangent. Step one, draw a number quadrant. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to put some points. We have pi over two, we have pi, we have negative pi over two, and we have negative pi. Here we have pi over two and pi. And we have negative pi over two and negative pi. Step two, draw the line y equals x. So if I draw the line y equals x, it's just going to look like this. This is the line y equals x. Step three, draw the restricted graph of cotangent. So if I draw the restricted graph of cotangent, we know that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. We have a point at pi over two, zero. And we have another vertical asymptote at x equals pi. So I'm going to put those on our graph. So we have x equals zero for our vertical asymptote. We have the point pi over two, zero. And we have another asymptote at x equals pi. So I'm going to put that on the graph. And our graph is going to swim like this. Step four, swap the x and y values. So if we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, then we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. If we have a point at pi over two zero, then swapping our x and y values, it will become zero pi over two. If we have a vertical asymptote at x equals pi, then it will become a horizontal asymptote at y equal pi. So I'm just going to put those on the graph. So horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, 
point at zero pi over two, horizontal asymptote at y equals pi. Step five, draw the new graph by reflecting about the line y equals x. So if I take and reflect, it's going to swing out like this. Now let's separate the new graph from the old one so we can get a good look at the graph of inverse cotangent. So if I separate the graph, here we have pi over two and pi. We have a horizontal asymptote at pi and a horizontal asymptote at zero and we have a point here and it's going to swing this way and swing that way. Now it is easy for us to identify the domain and range of inverse cotangent. The domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range is from zero to pi. Note that we have a set of parentheses. So what this means is that we're not actually including zero and we're not actually including pi but we can have values that come very close to them. Also note that it is possible to define inverse cotangent using a different range. But for this video, we will use the range from zero to pi. Considering that we restricted the domain of cotangent from zero to pi in the beginning. If you were to look at this on a unit circle, Here we have zero, here we have pi, and we can have values in the upper region of the unit circle. But we're not actually including zero, and we're not including pi. And that is how you graph inverse cotangent and identify the domain and range. Thank you for watching, and if no one has told you this today, always remember that you are awesome.